I really like my ASUS graphics cards. I have the Tough Cooler on my 6800 XT, and my RTX 3060 has a ridiculous Strix cooler. Like, the Strix cooler on that card is... I need to do a video. Do you guys want an overclocking video on the Strix 3060? I'm not really that into overclocking, to be honest, but I feel like putting that cooler on an RTX 3060 is kind of begging for overclocking. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. But anyway, Asus makes some great graphics cards, but sometimes they can be expensive, even compared to other graphics card prices right now, which is why I'm extremely happy to see this article. Let me get my fat head out of the way. Ah, there we go. <laughs> anyway, Asus to cut GPU prices by up to 25% starting in April. And let's hope that's not an April 1st joke. I don't think it is. <laughs> For one thing, they're not announcing it on April 1st. But where is this even coming from? So this is an article at Tom's Hardware. And According to this article, Asus has confirmed that it is slashing graphics card prices by up to 25%. And this is in an email statement earlier today, apparently to this Tom's hardware uh, person, I suppose. Um, an Asus representative added that price reductions will be applied to its entry-level, mid-range, and high-performance models. So this, uh, th that's nice to hear, because they could say up to 25%, but then like only slash prices on something unpopular, you know, that kind of a thing. But they're citing that it's the cuts to the tariffs on US imports from China as a major reason behind the MSRP reductions. If you haven't kept up with this, well, we saw a few days ago that the US is going to lift some tariffs on certain products coming in from China, at least for a while. Now, one of the things that have been hit by these tariffs, up to 25%, I believe, explaining the 25% cut from ASUS probably, <laughs> is products you know, on PCBs, PCBs, which obviously we need graphics cards. So this has been one of the causes, there's many causes, but one of the causes of higher GPU prices, at least from some manufacturers. It, it, to my knowledge, some GPU makers weren't uh, getting their car, their uh, you know components sourced from China, so wouldn't have had these same issues. Uh, don't quote me on this, but it's possible that that's one reason why EVGA had been able to keep some lower prices on theirs relative to some of their competitors. I don't think they were getting their their prices from there, but I could be wrong. Anyway, I think ASUS is importing theirs from China. And then that's why they're able to give this. I guess this is the actual quote from the email. As a result of the latest tariff lift on Chinese imports from the Office of the United States Trade Representative, gamers and PC enthusiasts will see lower prices on Asus GeForce RTX 30 series graphics cards starting on April 1st, 2022. Okay, now, this is on top of the stuff I talked about in my video yesterday where we saw that according to 3D Center, who tracks the graphics card pricing of, and availability in uh, major German retailers, so this doesn't reflect the global market, but you know, usually if, if it's trending down somewhere, maybe it doesn't trend down at the same speed or by the same amount, but it's trending down in most places, where we saw the graphics cards coming down to on only 25% over MSRP. <laughs> well, Honestly, in this point in a graphics card cycle, with the new GPUs coming out later this year, we would like to be, you know, 25% under MSRP. But compared to where we have been, this is actually very, very good to see. Whether or not you want to bite, who knows? But well, I understand that this 25% over MSRP, uh, you know, on this average from from 3D centers tracking here, isn't going to like perfectly line up with this 25% cut, but I'm just really hopeful that in April we could maybe see some GPUs selling for MSRP. Could that be a thing? I would love for that to be a thing. Anyway, I don't wanna go into all my full GPU pricing thoughts because I literally talked about that yesterday. I just wanted to add this on. So check my video yesterday if you're interested in more info and thoughts on should you buy now and all of that. Now, some other stuff in the news today. We've got direct storage coming soon and Microsoft giving us some more information about this. So they're claiming that this could bring a 20 to 40% CPU savings 
to begin with. Now, one reason why some people are concerned about uh, the initial implementation of direct storage on PC and its effectiveness is because one of the main ideas behind direct storage is to decompress files on the CPU. Whereas the, uh, sorry, not, not on the CPU, that's how it's currently done, sorry. <laughs> but to uh, get, get the information straight to the GPU and have it decompress it there. But the initial implementation of direct storage doesn't do that yet. It still does the decompression on the CPU, but this still does offer a ton of optimizations, which Microsoft is claiming brings some huge benefits. Now, to my knowledge, the only game that we know of that's gonna be taking advantage of this anytime soon, at least it's been announced, is Forspoken, which I believe comes out in October of this year. So we still have a little while to wait. And to get the most effectiveness out of this, uh, Microsoft is saying that you'll want an NVMe SSD and you want to be on Windows 11. It will have Windows 10 support, which initially when direct storage was announced, we, we heard that it wasn't gonna support Windows 10, but, but it will support Windows 10, but not it, it's not gonna be as optimized. So I'll be really interested in channels doing testing on that when this comes out to see actually what kind of a performance difference there is on Windows 10 versus Windows 11. Either way, I think this is great to see and I'm excited for direct storage to uh, come to PC. Now, other news, Intel has now actually officially announced the Core i9-12900KS and you're gonna pay more money for that S at the end. And now 739, I think that might be the price to the like retailers for buying the thousand units. And I think that the end result price for consumers might be more like 799. And I think that is what we saw it listing for already on Newegg. Now, what, what exactly is this? What do you get? And it's coming out April 5th, that's pretty soon. Basically it's a 12900K that's clocked super high. It should be fast. Here's, here's you know what it offers. Uh, video cards has it stacked up against the actual 12900K model. As you can see, it's still eight performance cores, eight efficiency cores, 24 total threads. You can see that its E cores are clocked 100 megahertz higher um, for both base and boost. And the P cores are two megahertz higher, sorry, 200 megahertz higher on the uh, base and up to three higher on the boost. But my understanding is that the 5.5 target uh, is not on all cores. I think that's up to two cores is I believe what they claimed. Um, anyway, so the idea here is that AMD is also gonna be releasing an updated CPU, the 5800X with the 3D V cache. These are gonna be competing against each other sort of. The MSRP here for the 12900KS is way higher. So the idea on the, 12, uh, on the 5800X3D uh, is that it has an increased cache, which is gonna target specific workloads, including a lot of gaming applications, but maybe not even all games equally. AMD is claiming a 15% up to a 15% or a 15% average increase in gaming, although I'd imagine certain games are going to be more cache sensitive than others. Whereas I think this 12900KS is going to be more of an across the board, you know, our, our cores are running faster, this thing is just going to be better and faster in pretty much every application. Also, this is doesn't make uh, it doesn't surprise me that this would cost more because overall I think this is going to be more of an all-around better chip right this is the 12900 KS and they're not doing a 5950 X3D it's a 5800 X3D so honestly I think for, for people targeting the fastest gaming performance if these come out about the same it seems like the 5800 X3D from AMD is going to be a cheaper, although still expensive way to get there. Whereas Intel is offering a higher end, just all around higher end part that'll be use, you know, more boosted and, and better in, in more situations, right? Especially ones that could take advantage of more cores and threads like it has here. Now, the last thing I wanna to mention today is that it looks like we have the 3090 Ti cost confirmed at $2,000 and some 3D Mark performance leaked. 
So, uh, and I'm getting this here from video cards. I think we'll get some official reviews and, th and stuff like this presented later today from independent reviewers. So I don't wanna dwell too much on this because by the time you watch my video, there might be more of this out already. But here's the main thing. You're, you know, five to 10% faster than your baseline 3090. Woo! <laughs> Um, honestly, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to buy a 3090 Ti, other than the fact that some people have a lot of money and they wanna buy a PC right now and they want it to be the best PC right now. So those are the people who are gonna buy this. I want the absolute best, I don't really care what it costs and I'm buying my PC right now. Oh, there's new graphics cards that are gonna be way better coming out at the end of the year? Well, the kind of person who can buy a 3090 Ti and not really care about it price-wise are probably the same people who could just upgrade their GPU at the end of the year again anyway, right? <laughs> so I think that's what's going on here. Now we've also seen a lot of models announced uh, and released and all of that. So yeah, I think that's it for my hardware news today because I've got to go teach geometry. I hope all of you have an excellent day.